OK, fantastic. We have a great crowd this morning. Again, um, welcome to today's presentation. My name is Rhonda Henshaw Powell. I'll be your moderator. Um, if you have any questions at all, please ask them in the chat box. I have popped some information in the chat box there. You can see that um, if you're having trouble dialing in on audio, there's the dialing numbers there. If you have a colleague who is unable to join or having difficulty, please send them that link there as well. Um, we are recording the presentation and Dr. Bibi will be available at the very end for questions. So please just as you think of them, pop them in the meeting chat and we can do that as well. So today's presentation um, by Son Bui, a senior field application scientist. Um, he is a senior scientist for biotechnology in our genomics division at ACD. He has over 22 years of experience in the life science industry, contributing to a successful launch of over 14 commercial products. He began his career, career at uh, Amersham GE, formerly Molecular Dynamics, and was a key contributor to the development and launches of the microarray spotter and cancer gene chip. In his next position at Panomics, he achieved um, a number of achievements, including developing, developing and launching six commercial products, Quantigene 1.0 assay, uh, 2.0 and Quantigene Plex assay, um, the development and launch of other products as well. Um, at ACD, he's one of the first of our senior scientists to develop the RNA scope assay from inception. And during his first, years, first six years at ACD, he contributed to the development and launch of five products including the RNA scope singleplex um, and the RNA scope multiplex, the RNA scope VS assay on the Ventana platforms and the LS assay on the Leica platforms. He has co-published 14 peer reviewed articles and secured two patents and has a, a bachelor's degree from the University of California Davis in neurobiology, physiology and behavior. Um, this is such an exciting honor to have him present to us today. Um, he's going to be presenting accelerating target validation with RNA scope ish automated assay. And um, again, if you have any questions at all, please pop them in the chat box during the presentation. So with that, Son, I will hand over the screen to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Rhonda, for the introduction. Thank you, uh, everyone, for attending today's webinar. Well, being one of the first of five scientists who contributed to making the RNA scope technology a reality. <clears throat> I'm uh, very honored to share with you my experience at C ACD and the technology that I truly believe in. <clears throat> well, some of you might be familiar with our company, some might just ask, who is ACD and what is RNA scope technology is? Um, to answer this question, I would like to go back uh, in 2009, when ACD was a small lab formed within my former company, Panomics. Um, knowing that only a, a small percentage of the startup company can survive, I decided to leave Panomics and took risks to join ACD when it was a tiny company that nobody knew about. Because I believe in the power that this technology could provide to researchers and clinicians to help them advance their research and accelerate their drug discovery. So after 10 years of uh, going through the ups and downs with a handful of dedicated scientists, we now have... Oh. Uh, Rhonda, how can I move to the next slide? If you can try using the page up, page down, if the if the mouse is not working. It's not working. Um, OK, and then try the up and down arrow keys. It's still not working. If you right click and do the laser pointer options. OK. Screen. Uh, but yeah, there you go. And then now see if it, okay, now it's working. Okay. okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Well, starting with about like eight employees back then, and we now have roughly 200 employees, and we have customers in 
38 countries in the world, spanning from North America, South America, Europe, Australia, Asia, and India. So we secure 40 plus issues and pending patent, and we are ISO 13485 certified for quality uh, product and services. This is important for um, our farmer asset services because we process 20,000 plus slide a year for customer. Um, so with the growth and the adoption of the Arnescope technology, it is best exemplified by the number of peer review publications that we have. If you look at the graph here, so in 2011, about two years after I joined the company, we have one publication along with three others. Uh, so we have to do a four here. Until the December of 2019, we have more than 2,600 publications. That is showcase how the technology has been adopted by the research uh, community over the year, within just 10 years. And those publication was categorized into different category and neuroscience and cancer are the, the two top uh, area that, uh, that dominate. And 25% of those uh, publication were published in many top tiers uh, journal. So the next question is, what is this honest scope technology that give us that many of uh, widely adopted uh, in research community? So this is the major advance in RNA -ish approaches. So our technology based on a proprietary probe design that coupled with the signal amplification that simultaneously amplify the target specific signal and at the same time suppress the background noise from non-specific hybridization. So this technology allow for the detection of single cell and single molecule detection. And we can detect any gene, any species, and any sample. And this technology allow simultaneous detection of up to 12 targets and they can be fully automated on both the Ventana platform here and the Leica platform. And the, the result can be quantified using a, a software or it can be uh, counted manually. So that's an overview of what the Arnescope technology is. So now I would like to go into more detail how the probe design work to ensure that we have the specificity that we need. So the key feature of our technology is based on the WZ probe design. So each probe contains three elements. The lower region of the Z is a 25 base sequence that is complementary to your target RNA. And the upper region here is a 14 base sequence and a spacer that link the lower part and the upper part together. So the R scope technology employ a probe design strategy in which two independent probes have to hybridize to the target sequence in tandem in order for the signal amplification to occur. Because it is highly unlikely that two independent probe
will hybridize to a non-specific uh, target right next to each other. So it's very, very hard for the, the two to hybridize to a non-target uh, sequence. So this will ensure that the selective amplification of target uh, specific signal. So that's how we ensure that whatever by there is specific. So for a typical uh, target probe, we have a pool of 20 pair that's spanning along a 1 kb region of a target. So if you have a 1 kb uh, target, we can design up to 20 pair of this Z that's spanning along. So now move on to how the signal is amplified. So you have your RNA sequence here. The RNA, when you fix the tissue, the fixative will form a cross-linking bond between the RNA and the substrate. So when we treat the sample with the target retrieval, the RNA will be unmasked. And when we add the target probe to the system, the target probe will buy to the corresponding sequence, like the, the two is equal by next to each other. So once the target probe is bound, we will wash away any unbound probe to prepare the system for amplification. So this is a cascade of amplification starting with the amplifier molecules bound to the upper part of the 2Z here. So these are 40, uh, these are 28 base uh, together. Each of the Z at 14, so together they form a 28 uh, base uh, binding site for the pre-amplifier to bind to. So when the pre-amplifier bind to this uh, probe, we at the amplifier molecules. The amplifier molecule will bind to the pre-am and subsequently the, the label probe will bind to the amplifier molecules. Together, they will amplify the signal by 400 fold. So per one pair of Z, we amplify it by 400 fold. If we have a pull up, 20 up, uh, the double Z pair, we amplify the signal by 8,000 fold. So this just to sh demonstrate how sensitive the assay is. And again, this uh, label probe is conjugated with HIP or AP enzyme, and this enzyme will interact with uh, if they interact with uh, DAB, the like HIP interact with DAB, they will form a brown colors, and if they interact with uh, fat red, you have a red color. Or in case that, that um, they have a TSA conjugated uh, fluorophore, you get fluorescent signal. So next, I would like to mention how specific the assay is. So when, when one of the Z by to the non-Pacific side, it will not uh, form a stable binding site for the pre-amplifier to bind to. So in that case, it will not amplify enough signal to, to generate a signal that, that you can visualize. So this will help to ensure the specificity of the assay. Okay, now the next question is, why not traditional RNA edge or microarray or PCR, but why do we need RNA scope assay? So let me go through the issue that the traditional RNA edge have that RNA scope assay can solve. First of all, the traditional RNA edge have really poor sensitivity because the drug labeling methods usually produce very weak signal in the absence of the high expression. And secondly, the traditional RNA edge usually is difficult 
time and labor intensive and also have a batch of bad variability also. And secondly, there's not many application for traditional RNAs, especially in, in infectious disease probe, they only have a handful of them. And at the same time, there's other assay like ISC for the same marker available on the market. So because of the three region, RNA-scope can, can help. What about microarray and, and PCR? Well, microarray and, B, and PCR, both of them are the gold standard molecular methods for the disease uh, profiling. However, the clinical relevant information regarding the cellular and tissue context, as well as uh, the spatial variation of expression pan is lost in the process. Therefore, the onoscope will come in place because with onoscope assay, you can visualize single molecules in a context of cell. So in the next few slides, I will um, show some data that demonstrate how the onoscope technology will help resolve the issue and the limitation of the traditional edge microarray and PCR. So the first uh, example here just to showcase the onoscope enables single molecule sensitivity. On the left the panel, you see the, uh, the data where HER2 expression, where we measure the HER2 expression in HeLa cell by onoscope assay. You see this uh, green dot here that her two's uh, expression and the uh, red signal here is a high abundance of the 18S ribosomal RNA. So we use this uh, for internal control. And on the right hand side, you will see the graph of the quantigene 2.0 assay. So this assay measures the RNA level directly in the cell lysate. And you see the standard curve of the in vitro transcribed RNA. And uh, the HER2 RNA is measured against uh, this uh, standard curve to for us to determine the number of uh, uh, copy per cell. So when we calculate the number of when we count the number of uh, HER2 mRNA dot in Hewlett cell and we compare that number with the mRNA transcript determined by the cell lysate of the quantigene assay, the two numbers agree pretty well. You see 14 here and it's 17 here. So the two number are uh, closely, uh, very close. So that to demonstrate the, the single molecule sensitivity of the RNA scope assay. But the second example showing you the comparing the RNA scope assay was a non isotopic edge. So, this data is provided by Dr. Jacob Estes from the NCI. So, he studies the swine influenza virus on infected uh, monkeys uh, samples. As you can see, it's clearly here. The onoscope assay is almost like a hundred times more sensitive than a conventional non isotopic uh, edge. And the third example is showing the specificity of this assay. You see four. Um, Different cell line we used to, to conduct this study. We have uh, Kasky, Shiha, Hila, and MS751, and we test four different SPV subtype. So it will be 16, 18, and 45, actually three. This column just to show you the no target probe, that means that, that, that nothing is present here get no type probe in here. So this serves as a negative control. And you can see 
as you, you know that the human papillomavirus high risk subtype carry the E6, E7 oncogene. And this E6, E7 RNA is about like 85% homologous in all HPV high risk subtype. So they are very highly uh, homologous. But the RNA scope assay can distinguish between the subtype. For example, if you look at uh, HPV 16, it's only expressed highly in Caskey cell and uh, moderately in Sheha, but it doesn't express in uh, Hewler or MS 751. Similarly, HPV 18 only expressed in Hewler cell and not in other uh, cell type. And HPV 45 subtimes only expressed in MS 751 and not the other three cell lines. The next example to, to, to show the species specific of this uh, assay. When you have a human probe, then you hybridize with human uh, sample, you see, or in a similar way, the mouse probe will show signal in a mouse sample. However, if you use a mouse probe and hybridize with human sample, you don't see anything. And vice versa, a human probe will not cross interact with the mouse here. So this is to show the species specificity of the assay. So next, um, I would like to introduce to all of you the portfolio that we have uh, currently. We have the RNA scope single plex in red and in brown, and we also have a duplex assay in red and brown or red and green. We have a multiplex fluorescent assay that allow people to detect up to four targets at the same time. However, however, currently we have a new product that allow researchers to detect up to 12 targets simultaneously for fluorescent assay. And we also have the base scope assay that allow to detect exon, exon junction, point mutation, and short target. So if you have any target between 50 to 300 nucleotide, you can use base scope assay to detect or we just release the micro RNA scope that allow the detection of RNA shorter than 50 nucleotide. So between 17 to 50 nucleotide, you can use micro RNA scope assay to detect. And finally, all of this assay can be automated on the Ventana platform and the like a platform to save time. So now I do want to move on to the, the target probe and talk about the catalog probe and the custom probe. So up to now, August 2020, we have more than 26,000 on a scope catalog probe and more and close to 4,000 base scope probe. So the, the, the catalog probe are the probe that was designed for other customers. And we have more than 40 species, including human, mouse, rat, dog, cow, pig, viruses. And if you find a probe that you are interested in in our catalog, you can order it and the turnaround ties between two to three days. However, if you cannot find anything on our catalog, you can request a custom probe make. So the ordering process is very easy. I mean, the feasibility confirmation within 24 hours and a turnaround time in about two weeks, you can get your, your own probe. Let me uh, walk you through the the custom probe request in four 
easy step. So first of all, you need to go into our website, go to a custom probe request and fill out the form. So when you submit the, the request, and our probe design scientist will go through the request and will get back to you, to you within 24 hours, usually within the same day, to inform you that if the design is feasible. If it is, then the local uh, account manager will issue the code, and when you submit your PO, we will start the probe design and the synthesis and you will get the probe within two weeks. That's how quick and easy the, the custom probe request is. And there's the exciting news that we just add this new four popular probe to our catalog. This is for the detection of the COVID-19 uh, RNA here. So the first uh, uh, pro is the allow you to detect the S gene that encoding the spike protein. So this probe here. And it will not, uh, it is only detect the SARS-CoV-2 viral RNA. It will not detect other similarly uh, like uh, like SARS or MERS viruses. It's only detect the SARS-CoV-2. And the second probe to the SANS probe, this, this SANS probe allow the visualization of viral replication in, 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 in individual cell. And the NAC2 probe, the A2 and TEMPRIS2, so these two probes are essential for the virus to enter the cell. So the A2 is the, the, uh, the cellular receptor for the COVID-19, and the, uh, the TEMPRIS2 is the, uh, the protease. So both of these probes are essential for the viral entry. And I will talk more about this at the end of the, uh, this, the presentation. Uh, okay, just to summarize this part, so due to the rapid probe design process, so we can help accelerate the companion diagnostic and, and diagnostic development compared to the conventional approach. So from nine months to two weeks. And within this nine months, you spend $20,000 per target. And within the two weeks, you spend about $1,000 per target. And we guarantee the success rate 100%. While a conventional approach, you have roughly a 10% success rate. And the key point in here is, I mean, like more than 75% of the gene that doesn't have the good antibody. And those include a secreted and low expression protein and a non uh, coding RNA that you cannot find the, uh, the, the antibody. And then most people who happen to have a non coding RNA target, they have to use uh, the RNA methods, which is RNA scope assay, to validate their target. So now I move on to the next topic that I will briefly go into the clinical research application. And I will mainly focus on the two popular application, which is. Uh, let me go to the uh, the application of my scope assay first, and I will go through. Uh, specifically the HPV application and the COVID-19 application. So the RNA-scope assay addresses the challenges that the ISC currently facing. First of all, the high background. In the in case of the albumin as a marker, so this uh, usually have high non-specific binding. And RNA-scope assay also help resolve the low expression in, in cases where people cannot dis discern 
the positive signal versus the background. Secondly, because RNA-scope assay is more sensitive than other assay, so we can resolve the sensitive, uh, sensitivity uh, issue of the ISC. And lastly, the antibody. In the case of CXCL13 in T cell lymphoma, so sometimes people have a hard time to find a good antibody uh, to detect that target. And at, in this case, on a scope assay will come into place. The second application of on a scope assay is is serve as surrogate for the fish. In here, we have gene amplification the MDM2 and the gene fusion for out fusion in lung cancer. So this uh, we can use the chromogenic uh, version of the anscope assay to replace the fluorescent edge assay. And more importantly, anscope assay play a big roles in infectious disease detection. It has been um, widely adopted to detect bacteria, like microbacteria, or viral detection, like CMV, EBV, Zika, and most recently COVID-19. So those are the big uh, area where RNA-scope assay will play a role. So now moving on, I will talk about uh, the application of the anoscope assay for HPV detection. So the HPV is widely uh, adopted and we have more than 120 publications. And we have the HPV high risk and low risk uh, subtypes. So the probe will target the E6 and E7 of the mRNA of each type. And they are type-specific discrimination. That means that if you have the HPV6 and HPV11, they will not cross high with one another. You will see expression of HPV6 separately and 11 separately. Similar to what I uh, showed you uh, earlier, like in case of the HPV 16, 18, and 45. So they only express uh, according to the, the subtype that, 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 uh, that they are assigned to. So all of this um, type specific probe can be used individually or they can be pulled together. Sometimes they can pull in in a pair, like APB 6 and 18 together, or APB 6 and 11 together, or sometimes people can pull all 18 of the high risk together to make a, a cocktail to detect all 18 high risk uh, subtypes. And we have a few application, I mean, a few uh, publication that have been published over the years. And I remember that back in 2013 and 15, I collaborated with, I think, doctors uh, Raymond Tuff from Cleveland Clinic and um, John Hopkins University and University of Liverpool to do the uh, the testing for the HPV of the, the real patient sample, and we co-published uh, a few papers back then, I think back in 2013 and, and 15. And those uh, tests were done on the Ventana platform, so it was fully automated on the Ventana platform. Um, so this is the... Um, I'm showing you the result from this uh, publication that published in 2015, where they um, study the. Let me see. So this publication were published in 2015 when they.
compare the RNA-Scope HPV assay with the HPV DNA edge and the P16 ISC. And all of the three assays will be compared against the gold standard QRT-PCR. So as you can see in, in this uh, results here, the HPV DNA is really poor result. You see this uh, a blue signal here is like, it, it's really hard to distinguish between the positive and the negative control. The RNA scope HPV show really good signal. You can distinguish between the positive HPV high risk 18 and the negative control here. The P16 uh, ISC also show pretty good uh, result, but um, the weakness is that it is not is it an indirect markers of the presence of HPV while our scope HPV test show the direct evidence of HPV's uh, activities. So the author of this uh, papers conclude that our scope HPV test demonstrated excellent analytical performance against the gold standard QRT-PCR. And they suggest that it could be developed as a clinical standard for the precise identification of HPV ribbon oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma. Um, lastly, I would like to uh, use this paper to demonstrate that on the um, College of American Pathologist Proficiency Test, they found that the Arniscope um, high-risk HPV exhibit higher accuracy than the DNA fish due to its higher sensitivity in the uh, the tumor that have low or intermediate HPV uh, viral load uh, numbers. Okay, the next application is the Arniscope assay for COVID-19 that um, can be developed for emergency use authorization pathway. So we developed this assay specifically to detect the SARS-CoV-2 test in um, formalin fixed uh, paraffin embedded human tissues. So the detection of this include um, specimen, the lung specimen from both the living and deceased uh, patient that um, potentially related to the SARS-CoV-2. And they can also be uh, used to study in heart, liver, and kidney. So we have partnered with, well, we have a Mayor Clinic that is at our partner that um, trying to de de develop the single site emergency use uh, authorization in their lab. And they are working on uh, with the Ventana's uh, platform. And we also, our partner Leica is on the way to develop this um, assay on the IVD platform, which is the bond three. So this graph just to show how rapid the honest scope uh, assay on the COVID-19 publication had been issued. So in the fiscal year of, uh, I mean, in the Q3 of fiscal year 2020, 
we have only like five publication, but three months later, we saw a five fold increase in the publication up to now. It's about like 25, 24 uh, publication up to now. And this publication uh, can be categorized in different applications that Anacope Acid can play a role. The first application is cell and tissue tropism. And the second application, natural immunity. And the third is vaccine development. And the fourth is people try to study the placental transmission from the infected mothers to the fetus. So let's go through a few of this. Well, we might not have time to go through all of those, but I, I mean, I have to cut short a little, a little bit. Uh, so let's go to the first application where you can see the tissue and cell uh, tropism. As uh, we all know that in order for the host to enter the, the cell, the cell needs to express the two uh, target here, A2 and, and temperature 2. So the two um, markers are required for the viral entry in order for them to infect uh, us. So the first um, publication here that used onoscope assay to demonstrate that the nasal epithelial cell is pressing the highest level of the eight twos and the, uh, the temperance. So this indicate that even though lung is the major target that the virus will attack and cause damage, but it is not the first sign where the virus uh, will attack. So it should be that the nasal epithelial cell is the first sign that, that the, the virus will attack. So that uh, lead to the, the, the discovery that, I mean, the, the nasal swab can provide the effective sample for us to do the testing of the, the infection. And secondly, face masks play a role in protecting us from getting infection. And the second publication here just to demonstrate that there's a correlation between the age of the, the patient and the A2 and temperature 2 uh, expression in mouse and human lung. And specifically, this paper found that adult human lung tissue have much higher expression level of the A2 and the, and the temperature 2. So that could explain why the adult is easily get uh, infected compared to the younger uh, people. So this is the, uh, the data to, to show the highly expression level of A2 and temperature 2 in nasal epithelium compared to uh, others uh, lower part of the the, the lung. So you don't see much uh, signal in, in other part, but you see highly expression of, of the two target in, in nasal epithelium. Okay. And on the right hand side here, it show the the other try to find which cell time uh, that have high expression level of A2. I need to go quick, so I need to skip a, a few things. I will skip this. Uh, let's go to the vaccine evaluation in animal model. So in this uh, study, the authors used anoscope assay to visualize viral infection in the control animals and the animals that uh, have been uh, vaccinated with um, the, the Moderna mRNA 1273 and the thermostable ARCOV. So, so both uh, vaccine 
so that it, it produced the neutralizing antibody and the T cell response. And as you can see in the controls uh, population, you see the RNA expression in the red here and in, in, the, in the black uh, dot here. While the, the, the vaccinated population show no uh, presence of the, the virus. So the virus is absent in, 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 the, uh, in the vaccinated population. I think the low dose of like 10 microgram, 100 microgram, you don't see any uh, presence of the, the virus in, in the lung tissue. Similarly, in 2 microgram and 10 microgram uh, level of the thermostable AR could be. And lastly, people use arthroscope assay to show the infection of the placenta and the potential transmission to the fetus. Uh, it is um, it's a, an increasing number of pregnant mothers that infected with the SARS-CoV-2, and most inborn have no infection, only a small number that test positive for, for the virus. And the, the mechanism is unknown up to now. And the significant uh, discovery of this uh, that this paper show is that the presence of the virus in the fetal side of the placenta. So that predict the vertical transmission from the mother to the, the, the fetus. Okay, now I will move on to the automated assay and I will walk you through a few uh, significant on the Lacabon and the Discovery Ultra. So on the left uh, panel here, you see the, the manual assay workflow. It's a tedious process that you have to do manually, uh, and it takes about eight hours from the de-wax to the catheter stain. So it takes about eight hours uh, to do this on the bench. So you can transfer the entire assay on to the bond RX here or the bond three here. So you just load the slide onto the machine. Tonight and tomorrow morning when you come in, everything is ready. You just need to cover slip and then um, look at the data. So everything is fully automated. And it fit into the uh, the current uh, lab uh, workflow. So for the, the bond RX is the research version of the, the Leica platform, and the bond three is the clinical version. And people can develop the assay on the bond RX, and they can easily transfer to the bond three later on if it needed, because it's, uh, it's, it's um, so that is not um, a, a huge difference in, in terms of the optimization. So So the next slide just to show all the assay that can be automated on the bond RX. So we have the the brown, the red assay, we have a duplex assay that you can visualize with two color, uh, red and brown. And you have a multiplex assay that can visualize up to four targets simultaneously. And you have a base scope assay that detects short target and a micro RNA that can be fully automated on the, the Leica bond also. And we also have a dual edge ISIF together. So you can run the arnescope assay and you follow with um, the ISC. So you can visualize both RNA and protein together on the same slide. 
So now move on to the uh, honest scope assay on the Discovery Ultra. So the same manual workflow you can transfer on to the Ventana platform. And again, both platforms allow people to run 30 slides at the same time. Uh, and each platform has a different uh, mechanism, and I will not go into detail how each uh, work, but this is just a general, uh, it's just an overview of how the thing works on, on each uh, platform. And the assay can be done uh, overnight on both platforms. Uh, these are the other chromogen that uh, Ventana offer. We have up to like five chromogen. If you want to run the assay using chromogenic, then you have the brown, red, teal, purple, and recently we have the green also. So you can run all of five of this uh, chromogen in a single plex or in a combination of uh, duplex when you have red and brown together, red and teal together, or red and green together. So you can have the duplex of those uh, two colors. And you ha also have the base scope single plex in red. And these are all the assay that uh, be, that is automated on the Discovery Ultra. So we have um, the universal HRP and the AP. So with HRP or AP, you can select one of this uh, chromogen here to match uh, whether it's an HRP enzyme, and you you can work with that DAB here or teal or green. Or purple, yeah. And if it's the uh, AP's uh, universal AP, you can work with red. And you also have the universal duplex where you can have red and brown. And you have a base scope assay that can be automated on the Ventana platform. And the microRNA scope assay is in development, so we don't have this assay available on the Ventana platform yet. And we also have the HISC dual assay together where people can see both RNA and protein on the same uh, single slide. And this is an example of the fields um, assay that ran on the Ventana platform. You have HER2 in uh, purple here on breast cancer, and you have the duplex uh, IG cap and lambda in, 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 uh, in red and teal. And you also have a red and green duplex assay in, in here. Again, the, the teal and green, they are uh, translucent. So even you have co-localization, you can still see the others are target because uh, this uh, chromogen uh, translucent. And you also have the duplex red and brown. And lastly, you have a triplex ish and ISC together, where you have uh, two RNA scope assay, two mRNA, and one uh, protein. So TNF, SF9, mRNA, and CD237, 274 um, mRNA, and CD8 uh, protein. Okay. And to summarize, um, the RNA scope technology give the lab the opportunity to explore new biomarkers and provide the better option for problematic ISC or H test. And this is a highly sensitive and specific assay. It's even more sensitive than ISC. And the data interpretation is very straightforward with a semi-quantitative manual scoring that is similar to ISC, or you can also do some, use the software to quantify the signal. And this assay allow user to detect both RNA and protein on the same sample. And lastly, the rapid probe design technology and the fully automated assay 
that help accelerate research and work discovery. So there's a take home message I would like you to take home with. Um, if you have any question, you can contact us via uh, the support email here on the phone number that we have listed here. And if you need a uh, material, uh, the recorded webinar or documentation, you can go onto the website here. And if you need to contact any of our uh, sound managers, you can contact Erica Tyler. She's account manager for uh, clinicals. Uh, and John Culliam, he's the uh, account manager for basic research and Haley, Haley Rock at the Inside Cell. With that, I will conclude my presentation. I will take questions. Thank you, Thank so, you much, so much, Son. That was excellent today. Um, let me go ahead and um, bring in um, Erica and John. If you want to say a couple of words while I go through and process the uh, questions for you. Okay. Uh, John, you are. Yeah, both. Yep, yeah, you're both active. OK. Hi, everybody. Um, this is John Pulliam. I am your field sales consultant uh, based out of Maryland, Pennsylvania, and also uh, cover Ohio. And I'm definitely thankful for this presentation today where you had an opportunity to learn about our automated products that we will provide to you to enhance your work and would love to have further conversations with you. So uh, my contact information was provided and I know that a recording of this webinar will go out and if you have any additional um, interest and want to engage with me, I would certainly entertain that. I also do uh, consultations as well, so I would love to uh, learn more about your work and how I can assist you. And with that, I'll hand it over to Erica and um, she can explain to you um, uh, about what she will provide in assistance as well. Thanks, John. Sun, thank you so much um, for doing the presentation for us today and everyone from joining. Um, I am Erica Tyler. I am the clinical specialist. I work on the East Coast. I cover from Maine to Virginia. And I work closely with clinical laboratories to automate uh, these assays. So if you're interested in evaluating any of the assays that were discussed today, please reach out. I'd love to talk to you more about that and learn what we can do to help you with your laboratory needs. So thank you. Great, thank you both, uh, John and Erica, for excellent introductions. And again, once again, thank you, Sun, for an excellent presentation. We did get a couple of questions that came in, so let me head off with those. Um, the first one here is, does the RNA scope assay require optimization for each target probe? Um, the answer is no. So unlike the ISC, where you have to optimize for every single antibody, for RNA scope assay, the only optimization that you need to do is optimize for the sample because we cannot control how people process their sample in individual lab. So some lab, they tend to overfix their sample. Some lab, they fix is shorter. So we just need to find an optimal pretreatment condition, which is the, uh, the target retrieval and the protease step once you find the optimal condition for the true treatment, you can use any probe on that uh, sample. So you don't, don't have to optimize based on the probe, but we optimize based on the sample. OK, great. Good to know. Um, a question came in here about, is it possible to use the same reagents on both automated platforms? Uh, the answer is no, because each uh, platform the reagent was formulated differently because they, it's the, the, I mean, the nature of the platform, they don't work the same. So that's why when we develop our assay, we have to have different formulation for each platform. So you cannot take the reagent from the like a bond and run on the Ventana machine or vice versa. It will not work. OK, and then just to expand on that a little bit, one of our audience asked if the Lycabon 3 automated system, um, is that 
can we use that as well as the bond rx or is it just the bond rx do you know uh the bond three uh, is a clinical platform so we um if people uh, if uh, we have if people would like to use the bond three, then they can get the reagent from uh, uh, our Leica partners. So we manufacture the reagent, but our Leica partner uh, will be able to assist with uh, providing the reagent. But we, but you cannot use the reagent for the bond RX. Then run on the bond three; it will not work. So the okay. bond three require the clinical version. However, you can use the probe. The probe is RU or probe. You can use the RU or probe on the bond three or the on the bond RX. They, they both work, but the detection reagent have to be uh, specific. Okay, okay. Thank you for that. Um, we did have an earlier question. Are you familiar with the Chiron Bayer BDNA chemistry and is is the RNA scope technology similar to that? Um, that's an excellent question. Yeah. Um, I need to go back to like uh, 15 years ago. Okay. So I actually <laughs> used that the, the brand DNA technology. So the quantigene assay used the, the brand DNA technology. And ours. Um, founders based on that technology to develop the RNA scope assay. So the amplification tree is very similar to the, the brand's DNA from Bayer. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, well, so uh, I, yeah, it was initially developed by Chiron, by uh, scientists, and it okay. was uh, sold to Bayer. Sounds fantastic. I, you know, so we, um, if you don't get your question addressed directly in today's Q&A, we can also reach out to Sun via uh, email so um, we can make sure that we our ans your answers go back and get back to you as well. So don't worry about that. Um, another person asked about specificity um, in terms of being cell specific in terms of cellular location. What is the probe? hybridizing to when you when they when you target a probe how is it targeting uh i think it was about halfway through your presentation a comment came in that it, they were concerned about cell specificity in terms of localization and so they were just wondering um what specifically the probe was hy hy hybridizing to um, is it a unique sequence? Is it? A yeah, it's a unique sequence. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the, I mean, at 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 uh, as you saw in the in the in the early part of the presentation, the Z probe have three parts. So that lower part is complementary to a specific specific sequence of your target. So Great. that means that if you have if you if you want to detect uh, multiple target at the same time. So they will not cross high because each uh, probe will target different sequence. So there's at no chance that they will cross hybridize with one another. OK, I understand that. And yes, of course, we should. If you have more questions about multiple probes, please. Um, please um, consider our Hyplex technology where we can have up to 12 signals in one in one assay. Um, there's also here, one other question: If if a if somebody has worked up their RNA scope assay manually and have established optimal conditions, how do they transition that to auto, an automated platform? Do they have to re-optimize? Um, how does that happen? Um, that's an excellent question. Uh, they don't have to. So when, but it doesn't mean that you can apply the same condition that you optimize for manual assay and bring it on to the automated platform. So the way it works is if you have optimized the condition for your manual assay, we have three different levels of optimization. We have the standard condition, we have a mild condition, we have the standard condition. The same thing when we do on the automated assay. We also have the standard, the mild, and the standard. 
So if the condition that you optimize for the manual assays happen to be a standard condition, then when you transition to the automated assay, you will have to use a standard condition on the automation. So it's, it's very straightforward uh, transition. You don't have to re-optimize everything again. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you. Um, one last question here before, because we are running out of time. Um, for NHP tissues, do you recommend that you trim the tissues the same day of the necropsy, or is it okay to trim them the next day? Um, that's a good question. So the key here is try to fix the tissue as soon as uh, possible. So after you fix the tissue, you can trim and you can do whatever you want to. But fixation uh, in time is critical to preserve RNA and also to inactivate the RNAs. So it will not uh, choose up your RNA. So when you fix, then you can do whatever uh, afterward. So it's, this is especially important for if you work with um, pancreas. The pancreas have a lot of digestive enzyme. If the the organ is damaged, then it is more likely that you don't have any RNA left. Because we uh, discovered this, I think, a few years back when we uh, sacrificed, I mean, like four mice. And one out of four that we have found usable RNA. The other three have no RNA left. So we have to develop a way to, to rescue them by fix the tissue as soon as possible and don't try to dissect the, uh, the, the, the tissue. So fix first and then dissect later. So for pancreas. Great. Thank you. Good advice here. Um, just another follow up question to that one, and this will be our last question today. How long do we fix the tissues before we can trim them in a in a, in a general speaking way? Um, we recommend to fix the tissue for uh, 24 hours plus or minus eight hours. So any time between 16 to 32 hours should be uh, sufficient because uh, if in case that you uh, cannot fix shorter, then an overfix is actually better than underfix. Great. Okay, thank you, Sun. That's Welcome. you know we've had such a wonderful presentation today. Excellent engagement from the audience. So thank you all for attending. Thank you all for staying on a little longer, um, as we had some really exciting information to share with you today. As we have mentioned, this webinar was recorded, so we will be posting it in the next 24 to 48 hours on our ACD Bio recorded webinars page. Um, and we will also be sending out an email with the link in it as well to those of you that registered and attended. So thank you all very much today. Thank you, Erica and John, for hosting today's presentation. If you um, want to reach out to them, their emails were on the screen. Uh, slide prior to this and you'll see that from the presentations as well um, and if you have any questions at all please reach out to the support team check out our ACD um, website and look out for the event page we have lots of new exciting webinars coming up over the next few weeks so with that thank you very much I will close out today goodbye